Hello everyone, it is Lucy and today we are back for part two of Makeup to Clutter. I have no idea what I was thinking, thinking the first video was just going to be like the video because it was like over five hours of footage. Don't really know what I was thinking with that. But now I'm coming to you with renewed big brain clarity and this is going to be part two. So it's going to be all eye products, so eyeshadows, mascaras, eyeliners, all that jazz. That's what we're going to be chatting through in today's video. I'm really glad to see that so many of you enjoyed the makeup declutter like how I enjoy makeup declutters just having something nice and lengthy to just like marinate you know your little brain sausage in it's delightful so I'm very excited to be providing some more delicious declutter clear out type of content for you in today's video but before we get into all the makeup chat I wanted to do a little bit of skincare chat and also talk about today's sponsor skin 1004 now I've talked about cream beauty quite a lot on this channel and even in the last declutter video and in this declutter video you'll see me mentioning quite a few different k-beauty brands that I'm interested in and as a k-beauty enthusiast I often like to keep my eye on like bestseller charts and Korean makeup awards that kind of come out throughout the year because that is sometimes where I find these hidden gems that I just haven't heard about yet so quite a few months ago now, they announced the Glow Pick Mid 2022 awards with like awards for every single different category. And I stumbled across this oil cleanser from Skin 1004 that won first place in the oil cleanser category. So I decided to pick it up because I hadn't tried anything from the brand before and I have been using it for quite a few months and my goodness, it is so delightful. The Madagascar Centella Light Cleansing Oil has six plant-based oils that help dissolve any makeup or residue on the skin, as well as oil extracted soothing Centella. It has a really light texture that just glides over your skin and effectively melts everything and it emulsifies and washes off so easily. So as I was actually testing out this oil cleanser, Skin 1004 got in contact with me and they said, hey, have you heard of us? I was like, <laughs> Well, actually I have. I have been testing and trialing a bunch of different products from their range, but one in particular that I wanted to mention was the Madagascar Centella Ampule Foam. When I first opened it and felt the texture, it was this kind of rich, creamy, foamy goodness. And I was like, oh no, because I find that these kinds of really nice textures are often quite harsh and strip my skin. But then I found out that this is actually a very gentle cleanser. It has a pH of five. And I just adore the way the creamy luxe foam makes my skin feel so soft, but also properly cleansed. So I just wanted to shout out this little cleansing duo because I have been very much enjoying using it as of late. And I will be testing out more products from their range and talking to you about them a little bit more in the future. But these are the first two that I just wanted to shout out. Skin 1004 have their own website, but they are also available globally on Olive Young, Amazon, Yes Style, Stylevana, and Jolse. I'll be popping some additional information and links in the description box below, but a big thank you to Skin 1004 for sponsoring this video. Now, without further ado, let's get rummaging and get into part two, that's four, <laughs> part two of the makeup declutter. Okie dokie, welcome back. It is uh, day two, the second day. If you hear some light clicking and keyboard typing in the background, it is because I share my home office with my lovely boyfriend, Max. So he is doing very important uh, critical work and I am sorting eyeshadow palettes. So <laughs> that's what's happening today. Here we have eyeshadow palettes, some little quads down here, kind of individuals slash glitters, mascaras, brow products, assorted other eyeliners and brow products. And in here we kind of have like overflow. Uh, I don't really know how to describe this. This is sort of like custom palettes and glitters and like more, not like everyday makeup, I guess. Like if I'm doing a costume or going to like a party, you know what I mean? Like really colorful makeup that I don't reach for in the day to day. That kind of all goes in here. So yeah, quite a bit to go through, but um, I think we'll start with eyeshadow palettes and make our way Round. I hope you enjoy seeing the remnants of my actual working desk in the background. Um, I do combine my actual like computer desk with makeup. It just makes economic space sense <laughs> in my apartment. Okie dokie. So here we have kind of all of our eyeshadow palettes that are bigger than, you know, a quad. I sort of consider like mini eyeshadow palettes to be a little bit different to like kind of our bigger guys. Um, and as you can see, some of these are smaller than others. This one I actually didn't see initially because it was in that sort of little box with my special makeup, but this is from Stila. And I think I got this from uh, my workplace when I worked there. I got given it as like a gift um, because they discontinued the palette. So I think we had spare testers, something like that. Um, but here it is here. This is like a classic travel palette. Um, and actually looking at it, it's got some really nice colors. And I think that is why I haven't gotten rid of it because every time I go to do it, I'm like, oh, but the colors are so nice. Like it's such a nice 
combo um, but I do think I will declutter this it's barely been used um, and they are Prada products and it looks in really great shape so I'll double check it's all good um, and then pass it on to some friends and family but even though this is a really great travel palette I am actually just not the kind of person who prefers this kind of like travel palette I like to you know customize my makeup and this is very much like an all-in-one kind of thing it is very pretty though I really like the colors but yeah I just know realistically I have not taken this traveling um, on short trips, which is where I would think this would come into play. Um, and I don't, I don't think I will. So I'll pass this one on. Then I have this one here from Romand. This is the, I think it's called the Light and Glitter Garden, but I'll show you. It's essentially a like glitter slash topper palette. It's more of a special effects kind of vibe. Um, I don't reach for this like daily, but I do dip into this from time to time and they are really gorgeous, like chunky, dewy, glossy kind of glitters. I don't know, like for the kind of looks that I like to do that are more like subtle and like ethereal kind of, this is very much like the vibe I enjoy. So this is something that I have really enjoyed having on hand and have dipped into for a couple different looks. All in all, um, this is a very beautiful palette. I do want to keep using it, want to keep playing with it but ultimately like not really one that I use every day, but I'm like, okay with that. It's a palette that I do dip into. I do enjoy, I think it's very pretty. Um, and we'll be holding on to that and putting in that like little special effectsy kind of box. But I just want to talk about it because I'm also going to talk about a bunch of other Iman palettes that I have down here. <laughs> Okay, I said a bunch and I actually just meant two. Um, these are both from the Romand Better Than palette range. Um, this one here is the one that I got first. And then this one here is a newer one. As you can see between the two, this one's sort of more neutral, like pinky tones. And this one is a little bit more cool tone, like lavender lilac -y. I use this one a lot um, and every time I travel, they went away with it, mainly because it's got a really nice range of colors all the way from like your lighter base colors, which that is the thing in palettes that really gets me. Um, I'm quite fair. So when the lightest colors in a palette that are designed to be kind of your base colors or highlighting kind of colors are like darker than my skin tone, it often kind of deters me from using a palette. So this palette just has like the perfect mix of colors, um, really nice range. I believe in their like marketing material for the palette. Like if you look at the little kind of information on the website, they do talk about like they show the palettes in grayscale and show how it goes like sequentially down. Um, and having like a nice chocolatey brown like that is just so handy as well for liner and whatnot. Um, so both of these palettes have that kind of range that I really enjoy. I haven't used this one as much, but I did only get it quite recently. See, this one I feel like is your very typical neutral palette colors. And this one is similar, but just a little bit more dusty, a little bit more gray, a little bit more mysterious kind of. So I need to play with this one more, but I do really enjoy both of these. The quality is great. The price point is amazing. Um, and there's a huge range of other colors as well. So if you prefer more warmer tone kind of colors and whatnot, there are so, so, so many. So I'm going to hold on to both of these. I love this one. I've already used it so much and I just need a little bit more play time with this one. I feel a little bit sad talking about this one. Um, if you have seen maybe previous clear outs, I might have talked about this, but this is the Alva palette from Odin's Eye, which is this really, really cool indie brand. Everything about the packaging, the presentation of this palette is stunning. So up my alley, this like whimsical kind of fairy. Um, I do believe it's based on like Nordic mythology, I think, um, or European mythology of some kind. It's so, so, so pretty. Um, I'll show you the colors. It's sort of like a rosy, mauve palette but it is definitely on the warmer tone side and as much as I do enjoy this palette like I like it I think it's gorgeous in practicality using it it does lean quite warm on me even some of these colors which I thought would be more cool toned it just goes really warm on me um, all of the metallic kind of colors are again quite warm on me it's kind of hard to explain because looking at it, a lot of these colors um, appear like they could be more cool toned, like these ones here. But even this one leans quite warm on me. Like it looks kind of purpley, but it leans more on that reddy side of the purple. So unfortunately it just doesn't really flatter me in the way I'd like it to. Like it just doesn't look quite right to me. Um, and it has been like this for a while. I was thinking about decluttering this in the last one, but I was like, no, I just need to try it more. I need to use it more because it's so gorgeous and like I just wasn't really ready to let it go yet um, but I think at this point I haven't really used it much it's such a beautiful palette and I just unfortunately it just doesn't work for me which is so devastating and I feel like I should try some other palettes from this range and it's like absolutely nothing to do with like the brand itself but these colors just I don't know it just 
doesn't work for me and I just prefer to reach for more like neutral cool tone palettes. So I'm going to pass this on because I would love for someone else who likes these kind of colours to really get use out of it. And it's so pretty as well. Ugh. Next up, I have this palette from Clio, which is the, I think, Before the Sunset palette, or pic no, Picnic by the Sunset. It's the Picnic by the Sunset palette. Um, and I will open it up so you can see. I feel like this looked a lot more exciting and riveting on the website. Uh, and then in person, you kind of look at it and you're like, okay. Um, it's sort of showing up on camera a little bit warmer than what it is. It's very gray, almost monochromatic cool tones. And you might look at it and be like, really? But actually these colors are really beautiful and easy. Even as like a one eyeshadow look, you can kind of see it better like that. It is really quite pretty on the eyes and really flattering, especially if you are more cool toned. And I do dip into it a lot when I'm just doing some really simple looks on my eyes, just kind of like one or two shades um, of like a more matte look because the majority of the shades are matte with a couple of these quite pretty glitters. I don't love it as much as I love the Romand palettes just because it doesn't quite have like that full light to dark range. It's definitely more kind of all muted colors, but uh, it is quite pretty and I do use it quite a bit. So I am gonna hold on to it. Another Korean eyeshadow palette. I actually have <laughs> so many K-beauty palettes um, and I actually want some recommendations or suggestions for like non K-beauty palettes to look into. Like I'm thinking about trying maybe like a Natasha Denona or like a new Anastasia Beverly Hills or something like that palette because I haven't tried like those formulas in so long. But I do love that there are just so many varieties of different color tones, um, especially with personal color trending in Korea. There's so many cool like eyeshadow palettes coming out of Korea, especially really easy to use daily ones. And the price point is so affordable a lot of the time. So this one is from Peri Peri. It is their Muteful Rose palette. Um, and as you can see, uh, I don't know how well you can see it. I've used it quite a lot. Um, there was like embossing <laughs> on this shade and it's like pretty much worn away. This one I got first for those Roman palettes and I used this a bunch. I then preferred the Romand one more again because it's just got like that full light to dark range. Whereas some of these colors are again a bit more on the muted to like my skin tone color. Like it doesn't really have a color that is like a highlight color for me, but this is a very pretty neutral kind of daily shade with a bit of that like mauvey rosy undertone. I do like this palette and it's gotten a lot of use um, and yeah, I'd like to continue using it. Then another KV palette. This is from Hamish and I believe it is their Rose Brick palette. Um, some of these colors have like fallen out and I've repatched them up. Uh, I did use this a lot when I first got it. Um, but now compared to some of the other colors I have, like these pinky colors, they are very warm, um, not as flattering as the colors I have. And I just simply don't reach for it a lot. I mainly use like these colors and there are a couple colors that I barely touched at all. The quality is okay. Um, I don't think the quality of some of these shades, especially even like the more shimmery shades is as nice as some of the Roman ones. Like they're just not as smooth. They're a little bit um, patchy. So uh, yeah, I am going to declutter this one because I just don't really see a need for it compared to the other palettes I have. I have similar shades that I like better. Um, yeah, just don't reach for this one. Then we have my Old Faithful looking a little worse for wear. This is the Modern Renaissance from Anastasia Beverly Hills. I'm sure we're all familiar with this palette. Um, I really like this palette. This was kind of my first eyeshadow palette, like I'm sure for a lot of people, where I just felt like the quality was so good. Um, and then I was like, wait, maybe eyeshadow can look nice on me. Especially shades like this, like Love Letter, this really gorgeous, like pinky, plummy berry shade. Um, the shimmers I'm really into. This color I've obviously used a lot. Um, yeah, I have gotten a lot of wear out of this palette. It's definitely a little dusty. I probably reach for some of my newer ones a little bit more often, but I do go back to this. And just looking at this, there's like so many shades. Um, I love Vermeer, it's such a beautiful shimmer. Bon Fresco, this kind of like taupey lilac color is so gorgeous. Uh, yeah, I really like a lot of this color story and it is tempting me to try the Natasha Denona Retro palette because it kind of has a lot of the tones that I like most from the Anastasia Beverly Hills palette without as many of the like more warm tones. So I don't know if anyone's tried the Natasha Denona Retro uh, and you're more fair or you have cool toned skin, um, let me know what you think because I've seen mixed reports. Some people say it's really great for cool tones. Some people say it's not, but yeah, such a classic palette. I've used it uh, so, so much. Then we have a couple from ColourPop. First up, we have uh, Stone Cold Fox, which is their kind of flagship cool toned neutrals palette. Sorry, it's looking a little, <laughs> a little worse for wear. I can probably give it a little bit of a cleanup. 
I feel like the kind of formulas and the quality of ColourPop's eyeshadows, especially like these powder formulas, are good, but not like as exciting to me as some other ones. Like some of those K-Beauty palettes, like the Roman palettes, their shimmers or like glitter shades have this like jelly dewy effect. Um, whereas I feel like your ColourPop shadows and their formulas are a lot more like a lot more of your traditional metallics. This has kind of all of the neutral shades ranging from like your pinky neutrals to your more like gray toned, um, smoky eye, like kind of neutral. I don't know if it's just me. I almost find this kind of size of palette just slightly overwhelming. <laughs> like I actually like those, you know, 14, 16 pan um, shadow palettes, kind of like the Romand ones. I like that size because it feels a little less overwhelming. Like I know that it's divided up into like colored looks, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I just, don't reach for this like on the daily, even though this is probably more of a daily palette. Maybe I just need to put it to the front of the drawer. That could be it as well. <laughs> it's like hidden at the back. So maybe for the next few weeks, I should like play with this because I do tend to just reach for like quads or like kind of easier palettes. But this does really have like kind of all the neutral shadow to me. But, I, but yeah, as I said, I think the formula is good. It does everything I need to do, but it doesn't like excite me. Um, but it is like a basic all round neutrals palette. And again, this is just more personal to me, but some of these like lighter shades up here, we've got like one sort of beigey matte, um, which I think is meant to be your kind of highlight shade. But for me, that is like my lid shade, <laughs> like my base kind of shade. So like for me with a palette of this size, I would appreciate having a few more like light matte shades. But again, I am just like one uh, rat lady with fair skin. And it's a company that needs to make a palette that is usable for a variety of skin tones. That is obviously a criticism that is very specific to me, very self-centered. But yeah, very good solid neutral palette. I'm gonna reorganize the drawer so this is like easy to grab because I do wanna use this more and get to know it like better. Cause at the moment I think it's good utilitarian palette but like nothing that I'm like obsessed with but I don't think I need to be, I don't know. You get my point. <laughs> and then from ColourPop, we have the Inner Trance palette, which are these really pretty lilac, baby blue, lavender, pinky kind of tones. I don't use this like on the daily, but I do actually use it for blues quite a bit because I do like blue eyeshadow um, and these really pretty purples. So I will, I will be hanging on to this. I don't really have much to say about it. This palette sort of fits into that, like when I'm going to a party or when I'm doing like a specific look kind of thing, it's not really one I reach for daily, um, but it is pretty, quality is good, um, pretty solid, nothing to write home about. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the ColourPop nine pan kind of vibe. I feel like there was definitely a period of time when there was like, I swear like two of these coming out a week. And I think for having like a nice affordable option that gives you like a range of colors so you can have more play with your makeup, they are great. I don't think they're the greatest formula of all time, but they are pretty good and do what they need to do for when I need to do it. So holding on to that one. And then this one was again, something that got, I believe discontinued and my work had like additional samples. So I got one, it's the Urban Decay Electric palette. It's very much like a high pigment, um, doing like looks kind of palette. I don't reach for it a lot, but it is very handy to have on hand because every now and then you need like a neon green or like this kind of really shimmery purple or like a really, really bright blue. Again, I am just using this personally on myself. They're just powders. If they did look funky or smelled weird or anything like that, I wouldn't use them. Um, but in terms of just having them on hand for when I do need to do just random colorful makeup, um, this is what I have uh, and I haven't got any others. <laughs> if I got a new palette that was like really colorful and like kind of covered all those bases, then I would maybe declutter it, but I'm, I'm happy just having these on hand for now. And then we have my yucky little magnetized palette. <laughs> Listen, this is dusty, this is crusty. I don't even know if I should include this in the video or not, um, but it's got a lot of Makeup Geek kind of single shadows, some shadows from like a really old Stila palette. To be honest, off camera, I'll probably sort through this a little bit as I feel like some of these, like this random, I think it's a NARS blush. I'm like, I don't think I ever use that um, and probably wouldn't going forward. Um, got like a random Etude House shade in here. It's very random. <laughs> this is just like maybe when a uh, palette is like too old, like I wouldn't give it to someone else, but I maybe want to keep a couple of shades, then I'll like dip up them and put them in here. But yeah, so we have our little eyeshadow palettes that we are keeping. And then we have this little stack of three here that I am decluttering. So not like a major declutter, but you know, 
I do reach for these. I probably will put this with my like little glitters and like special effects colors because I don't really reach for this on the daily. And like these ones here are more realistically the eyeshadow palettes that I reach for kind of day to day. Alrighty, so here are my eyeshadow quads. Not many of them to be completely honest, but I feel like let's just run through them really quickly. First off we have this one from Flower Beauty. This is the Petal Play Quad and it is very pretty. Some of these metallic shades are really, really gorgeous actually, but I don't reach for it a lot because I do feel like I have some similar shades like this. But realistically, this is like a four shimmer quad and knowing how I use makeup, I tend not to go to like individual quads just for like shimmers. I know it seems a bit silly, but just like talking about how I use makeup, um, I will either go to like a dedicated solo glitter or I will go for a palette that has that shimmer and glitter in it. So um, as pretty as this is, I feel like someone else could get some use out of it. I've only used it a few times. It's absolutely stunning, a really beautiful formula, but I just don't kind of reach for these types of quads. So I'm gonna pass this along. This eyeshadow palette is from the Pony um, Mimi Box like collaboration. This is the I'm eyeshadow palette. It's these really pretty um, pink shades. Oh, hello. I just have other pink quads. In fact, I'm about to show you one um, that I reach for over this. And this pink shimmer I really enjoy, but I also have another pink shimmer individual that I prefer. Um, I don't really use this brown. It's quite ready tone and not really my vibe. I did use this quite a bit. Like there's quite a bit of wear on that uh, lighter shade there, but realistically not using this as much anymore. I don't even know if they still make these anymore, but it's, it's a nice little formula. So yeah, I'm going to declutter that. Here we are again with my Besties Remand. One is like a more neutral um, kind of combo. This other one's more of a pink one. This looks quite like peachy and warm, um, especially this shade here. But when you apply it on the eye, it's a lot more of like a neutral pastel pink. It kind of like transforms a little. You can maybe even see like the gradient in the shade. It's a quite creamy formula. So it, yeah, it applies differently to how it looks in the pan. But this is a very, very pretty little pink quad. And if I do a look with that, I'm always very happy with it. And this is like the most beautiful, like neutral, almost cool toned, like metallic -y glitter shade. So, so, so pretty. So I really, really like both of these. And again, I would recommend you to check out the uh, Romand eyeshadow range. I swear this is not sponsored by Romand, um, but I, I really am just like a stan of their formulas and their color story. I think they just do a really, really great job. And this one here um, is like a MAC quad with like custom colors. And I do put like Makeup Geek ones in here too. I think these two are Makeup Geek and these two are MAC. Um, I just use it to swap out singles. <laughs> so what I'll do sometimes when I'm traveling um, is use this quad to put like really basic shades in that maybe I don't have in like my more colorful like palettes. So I just then have like my go-to, like neutral everything. Um, I usually will also put like a brown, like a dark brown or a black in there. And that's got everything I need. And then I will take like another quad as well. So uh, this is more utilitarian. I suppose it's technically in the quad section, but I sort of put it in the like special slash like utilitarian section along with like the custom magnet palette and like the colorful makeup. Cause I don't really tend to go for this on the day to day. I prefer to use my other palettes, but um, it does come in handy when traveling every now and then which I haven't done a whole bunch of <laughs> um, recently, but hopefully next year that will uh, change. So yeah, that's that one. See, so yeah, I popped the MAC palette to the side because it kind of goes in that section, but uh, you know, keeping two, getting rid of two. Pretty, pretty good. <laughs> Alrighty, now we have a bunch of like singles and glitters. Um, I'm gonna start with these ones here, our little glitters and then we'll talk about the single kind of cream shadows and whatnot. If I'm being real here, um, I'm probably going to keep all of these bar this little one. Both of these 3C glitters um, I've had for a while. I probably do need to check if they're all good to keep, but I have used them recently and they've been fine. Um, it's in the shades Double Note and I think Petal. They're just so stunning. The perfect like kind of chunky liner glitter that you want to put like under your eyes or on top of your lids. Like they just come in handy. They're so beautiful. I do think they are a good um, alternative to, I know people like the Urban Decay ones. A lot of other kind of glitter liners are really fine, but this has a really nice combination of like those smaller iridescent glitters, but also like the big chunky like hexagon ones. This Mood one um, I got more recently uh, and it is quite similar to the 3CE Double Note one, if just like a little bit different. 
Um, I haven't used it a whole bunch and I need to test it more. So I'm going to keep that for the now. And then this little guy is the Peri Peri Sugar Twinkle Glitter. I got this in the Yes Style Advent Calendar, I think. Um, and it's got like a really nice ballet pink kind of color. It's super pretty and it is different to the other glitters I have. If I want like just a really soft kind of cool icy pink color, I don't have one like this and um, it's very pretty. Then I have this, it's not a glitter, but it is in the same type of component. It's this cream shadow from Kosas. I was very excited for this and I know a lot of people love these, but unfortunately for me, it just did not work for me and my eyes at all. Um, I found it a little bit tricky to work with and the color was quite sheer. Like I know that's the point, it's meant to be like kind of a no makeup makeup thing, but it was kind of this peachy, orangey, goldy kind of color that I didn't love. Um, so I'm gonna pass this on because I've only used it a couple times to um, a friend or some family because it is very pretty, but I just don't um, love it. It just didn't work out for me, which is sad. Alrighty, kind of cream, um, shimmery shadows here. Starting off with the Kaja Bento Beauty Box in Rosewater. I've only just gotten it quite recently, so um, I'm gonna hold on to this, but I really like it so far. Then we have this Romand um, single shadow. Uh, I haven't really reached for this much. Um, I kind of got it on a whim to test out and try. Um, again, I get Yes Style credit, so I try and, you know, try new things and see if I can find anything funky and cool. Um, I don't even know if this is still available anymore, and it's nice, but not really anything special. Um, and I have other shades like this uh, in palettes or other, you know, individual shimmers that I prefer, so I'll be passing this on. This Get Loose Glitter Gel from Unleashia I got in last year's, I think, Yes Style Advent Calendar. Um, or maybe it was this year. I think it was last year's though. And I haven't used it a whole bunch because I do tend to reach for like loose glitters or like glitter liners as opposed to like a glitter in a pot. However, I did use this recently and thought it was very pretty. It uh, is this kind of like goopy, <laughs> pinky like glitter with like iridescent shine in it. Um, yeah, it's cool. I don't really have anything else like it. So I am gonna hang on to this one. These Aritam Shine Fix eyes are like so iconic. Um, I remember getting these in Korea and being like obsessed with them and using them so much. They are very similar to like the Hourglass, you know, like pot shimmer shadows. Um, they're very pretty, but I don't think I need both of them. This one's more of like a yellow gold. I believe it's called like Coconut Bay or something. Um, and this one is more of like a pinky, peachy kind of shade. So I think I'll hold on to like the pinky one because I did use that more often and I liked this one more. And then the goldy one I'll pass along. This ColourPop um, Super Shock Shadow, I think from like their Disney Princess collection is quite similar to a other ColourPop shade that I remember one YouTuber who I don't think does YouTube anymore. Um, I think her name was Julia, maybe. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone else watched her. Um, I can't remember her name exactly. There was another ColourPop shade that she raved about, but this one is called Frog. It's hard to show from the swatch, but you can kind of see it there. It's this like really iridescent, almost like no base color. It's like transparent, but it's like a pink and blue kind of shine. It's a tiny bit dried out as this ColourPop formula does tend to do. Um, but I think I'll hang on to it for the time being because that is like so pretty. Ugh. Then another shade that I've talked about a lot is this one from Addiction. It is this like really a pretty pink shade um, and it basically puts like a jelly like glittery glaze on your lids that is just so so pretty. Um, Addiction is like a department store Japanese cosmetics brand and uh, when I eventually go back to Japan I would definitely pick this up in another shade because this formula is so gorgeous and like subtle but also like special. Ugh, I love it. And then this one is a bit random. It's an old Bobbi Brown shade. Um, it's a single in this like iridescent, like green peachy kind of tone. The kind of shade that's a bit hard to pick up on camera, but it's called Incandescent. Um, and I don't use this a lot. It's kind of like one that I use once in a blue moon, but every time I use it, I get compliments. <laughs> I don't know how much longer I'm gonna hold onto it, um, but I've held onto it for this long and every now and then I use it. So uh, what, what's a little longer? <laughs> Okay, um, I wouldn't class this as like a successful, like satisfying declutter, um, but this category isn't necessarily like a super everyday category. Um, and I do like genuinely use a lot of these quite a lot. Um, and then these ones I know I don't use as much. So I feel like even though it's not like a, wow, like savage, huge declutter section for this section, 
it is fulfilling like the Marie Kondo method of like, you know, saying thank you and letting go of things that we don't really touch, that don't really spark joy and keeping the things we, we do like. Actually, to be honest, I think I can part with this glitter gel. I've only used it a couple times. And like I said, I do tend to use other things. And while I don't have anything in this formula like it, in terms of getting a similar effect, I do have a lot of other like purpley pink glitters. So I can pass this on. But that I think feels and looks pretty solid. You know, I know what makeup I like to do. I know what I like to have on hand and to reach for. Um, I do really love these kind of really pretty glitters. Like I don't use them every day, but I do love them. And they're just some of my favorite like things to have. And these like really glittery, shimmery, like a jelly-like eye toppers are just like, ugh, they're so yummy. So yeah, that, okay, that feels good. Here we have a range of uh, like eye and brow products. Um, and I'm just gonna start with the mascaras, just move these out of the way. I have a bit of a habit <laughs> of holding on to mascaras that I have like finished um, and moved on to like a new one, but like holding on to the old one in case like I don't like the new one. But like this is the category of makeup where once you're done with the mascara, you do, you do need to get rid of it and move on, uh, otherwise risking a sty. So this mascara I haven't actually opened. It came in the YesStyle Advent Calendar. Um, I, haven't, I haven't started using it yet, so I don't know why it's there because I normally keep like new slash backup slash fresh product in like a separate section. So um, I'm holding on to this, but I'm putting that in the section where it needs to be. Then we can essentially separate uh, the mascara section like this <laughs> in that these are all old mascaras that I have used and this is my current mascara. So we can declutter all of these because all of these are old and crusty. I don't remember loving this one from Etude House. This is the Curl Fix Mascara. Um, I know this is really popular, um, but I didn't really like how it made my lashes feel. It did that kind of like crunchy lash thing. I feel like this happens a bit with some of the Korean mascaras I've tried with Japanese mascaras too. Um, but I prefer more of like a flexible hold, even if a strong hold on the lash. Like I want to be able to touch my lash and have it not feel like crispy. I know it is like a popular mascara, but I feel like it's been popular for a really long time. And like the formula was really good for like when it came out, but I feel like for my preferences and maybe for new mascara formulas, I don't know if it stacks up. Maybe that's blasphemy. Maybe I don't get it. I don't, I don't know. I didn't feel strongly about this. Honestly, I love a Lancome mascara. Um, my mum is like a Lancome lady. Um, and I remember when I was a kid and I was starting to get into makeup, she would give me like, you know, like little travel like samples that they give you when you buy like Lancome and Estee Lauder, they give you like those you know, spend $85 and get like a pack with like a little mini eye makeup remover and a mascara and you know, whatever else. Um, so I used to use like the mini mascaras that she gave me for ages because I got really into makeup when I was a kid. And I still love the Lancome mascaras. I think they just look so fluffy and like classic and pretty. Um, they're really, really good. So this is like the hip nose, I think. Um, a very classic mascara. And I'm actually currently using the new Lancome mascara, the Lash Idol, and I really like it. It doesn't really hold the curl as much as I like, but it does make my lashes look very pretty and like the color, like the, the depth of the darkness. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that, but you know what I mean? Like it's a, a nice, pretty defined black without being like too, too black. It's like a good soft black. Yeah, it's very pretty. I do really like this mascara. So that's my current one. This one needs to be decluttered. This one was another one that I used. It is the Romand Han All Fix Mascara. And I believe this is the long, like lengthening formula. This is really great if you don't want your mascara to ever come off. You really need to use like one of those dedicated mascara removers or like a bi-phase makeup remover. It stays on really, really hard to get off. So I wouldn't <laughs> use it if I didn't have those things on hand because then I would just like not be able to get my mascara off. It's like rock solid, this uh, mascara, but it is very good. I have tried other formulas that a similarly like long lasting that I think I slightly prefer. Again, a great formula and um, really great price point. And then this one from Holica Holica, the correcting mascara, which is designed to look like the kind of fancy toothpaste that I like. I know this is popular, but I just felt like this was just so, so I didn't really like the applicator. It felt a little clumpy to me. Um, maybe I'm missing something, but um, it, it was just, I don't know. I reached for other things over this. Um, it's just okay. Well, I mean, that definitely feels good. <laughs> Just having the one uh, not expired mascara, that, that feels nice. Then let's talk about eyeliners. First up from McQueen New York, this is their waterproof pen eyeliner. This is in like one of the brown shades. If you're looking for an affordable uh, liquid eyeliner that has like a brush tip, this is it. I believe this is less than $5, um, definitely less than 10. I know that, but it is so affordable and so excellent. So highly recommend that, definitely holding on to that. 
This one is newer to me. It is from a Korean beauty brand called Luna. It is their muted shade brush liner. Um, I will reveal now that I believe in liquid liner brush supremacy as opposed to like the texture pen, what do you call it? Like felt felt tip? Yeah, felt tip. I really don't like felt tip pens. <laughs> um, and as soon as I have a felt tip pen, I usually pass along because I learned with a brush tip. I think the brush tip is superior. I think you have more control and can do like a thinner line, but I also feel like if you learn with a felt tip, I, I respect that, but I, yeah, I love brush tips. Um, and this is like a kind of gray muted shade. It's very pretty, it's very subtle, um, and one that I got quite recently. So I'm gonna continue using this. I don't have any recollection for how I got this um, NARS eyeliner. It's like just their classic black pencil liner. Um, the formula is old and thus does not work very well. I would rather use like a gel liner or a shadow or whatever. Um, I don't know, I do not reach for this, so I will declutter it. This MAC liner is their um, fascinating eye coal, which is basically just like a white liner. Um, this is the only white liner I have. It is good to have on hand. I do not use it a bunch, but when I do need one, this is the one, works well shout out <laughs> we'll hold on to this this is from dolly wink which is a japanese um lash makeup brand by tsubasa masawaka who is like a really famous gyaru um she's in a lot of magazines and stuff iconic kawaii icon um this <laughs> eyeliner however um is also iconic i really like it and i would buy it again um stock up in japan where it is affordable but this one is definitely like so old <laughs> And I actually used it like more recently. I was like, oh, I should use this for like a black liner. And I was literally like opened it and tried using it. And I was like, oh, this is so old. I should not be putting this on my eyes. So I need to declutter that. Then we have this from Mersey, which again, I believe was a Yes Style Advent Calendar get. Um, and this is great. This is a charcoal brown gel liner. Um, the color is so pretty. It's very easy to use. And again, very affordable. Again, kind of like a recent get for me. So I haven't used it like heaps and heaps and heaps, but from what I've used so far, I very much enjoy it. It's, um, it's a great product and a great price point. And then these two here are both from Clio. We have the Sharp So Simple Waterproof Pencil Liner and the Extreme Gel Presso Pencil Liner. Um, I prefer the formula of this one to this one. This one's just really skinny. Um, so it's really easy to get like a really thin line um, and it lasts really well. But the color of this one, this more like cool toned gray charcoal brown kind of color is prettier. This one's like more of like a warm cocoa brown. I will hang on to both of them for the meantime, but I would potentially like get this in like a different color. Although I have used this a lot and I tend to put like a powder over it to set it um, or to like diffuse it to be like a softer liner. Um, but yeah, both of these are really great. Clio does excellent eyeliners, especially in like their gel formula. Um, do check those out if you're on the hunt for like an affordable gel liner because they are so, so, so good and last so well. I mean, that's pretty good. <laughs> Um, I mean, these are kind of like crusty old slash expired um, and these are not, but I do actually use like all of these liners um, with the exception of maybe the white one. I don't use that one so often, but I do actually use all of these on a regular rotating basis. So that feels good. And then we have like brow um, products. Yeah, um, the only reason I say that with like a question mark is because this one here is not a brow product. This is just like an eyeshadow base. Um, so yeah, it's like my only eyeshadow base I have. So I'm gonna hold on to it because I do need it from time to time. But I typically don't use an eyeshadow base. Um, but yeah, that's that's not meant to be there. <laughs> uh, so starting with brow gels, this is the Romand Han All Brow Fixer. I am going to declutter this. This is probably one of the few misses from Romand. This does fix your brows well but I do feel like it dispenses a little bit too much product and then it can kind of get like a little gunky and then if you aren't quick enough to brush it through it kind of goes flaky and turns like from clear to like a whitish kind of cloudy color. I've had that happen to me on a couple of occasions and been a little bit frustrated with that experience and I have other brow gels that I feel like just do the same thing but better. Brow gels for me, I just want them to keep my brow hairs in place as they are quite thick and unruly. Um, and this one doesn't do it as well as others that do it and also don't go gunky and weird. So I'm gonna declutter this. Now this brow gel from Etude House um, is a very nice brow gel. It's not quite as strong hold as some other brow gels I've tried, like the Anastasia Beverly Hills brow gel. I really like that one, but it does do like a nice medium hold and has like a tiny bit of like a brownish tint to it. So if you like that kind of, um, you know, no makeup makeup look or like a natural fluffy brow and you don't even really need to fill in your brows much, then you would really like this. Um, I actually really enjoyed it and as well, like it's a great price point, it's quite affordable um, and it does the job. So I'll hold on to this and finish this up, but I'm, I'm nearly at the end. So if you have any recommendations for a brow gel for me to try, um, let me know. Otherwise I may consider going back to my old faithful. 
I'm not going to talk about these at length individually because I'm going to keep all of these. They're all great brow products for different reasons. Um, we have these two here, which are the Peri Peri Speedy Brow and the Romand um, Sharp Brow. Yeah, um, these are both really great <laughs> um, for like smaller strokes and filling it in. Um, the Peri Peri one here I have is like more of a gray shade, um, which I find handy when my hair color is more of that like cool tone color. And then the Remand one is great for doing like Fetalite strokes. It's quite a light pigment product um, and it doesn't like put down a lot of product. It's not like a super soft pencil. So it's great for just doing those like hairs at the front of your brow. And then I really like this one from Tony Moly. It's their lovely eyebrow pencil. I believe this is also like sub $5 and it puts down a lot of product really easily. Um, it's a really nice shade. Uh, it's, it's not perfect, but like for the price point, I really can't complain. It's really awesome. And then my favorite as of late has been my Romand All Flat Brow. This is in the shade Grace Taupe. Um, I have been using this and recently I use this and my boyfriend complimented me on my eyebrows and was like, they look good. Did you do something different? But I do agree that this does give it like this really soft natural vibe. It could just be that this color is just perfect for me. The C2 Grace Taupe. Also like the formula, it's just really easy to use. It just puts down like a really nice like light to medium amount of product. Um, and it's quite quick as well because it's a little bit thicker. Uh, yeah. Holding on to all of these, they all do different things. And my hair color changes a little bit from time to time, so it's good to have like the variety. Riveting, I know, but this is this is a utilitarian section. <laughs> And with that, that is the eye draw done. Um, again, I will wrap it up for today. I will show you like the fully, you know, reorganized, completed draws at the end for satisfaction's sake. And then we will come back and do the lips. The third and final part of this makeup declutter will be on its way soon to you. That is part three, which is going to be lipstick, lip gloss, all the lippy, the lippy, lippy lip, lip stuff. <laughs> and as always, thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.